Good morning. Welcome to the traditional worship service at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Saginaw, Michigan on Wednesday, June the 24th. For our members who have received the email, I would ask you to turn in your hymnals or pull up the email attachment of the lyrics for our opening hymn, Hymn 902, and would all who are joining us for worship today lift up your voices, Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Dear Savior Jesus, whose kingdom is truly among us through the means of grace, word, and sacrament, your heavenly kingdom is that blessed place where the angels and the departed saints see you face to face. May the Holy Spirit keep us in that one true saving faith in you, our Savior, Shepherd, and Friend, until we see you face to face in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Join me in confessing our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The sermon today is a continuance of our series on the Lord's Prayer and the petition that we take time today to reflect upon is the petition, Thy Kingdom Come. Now when you hear the word kingdom, what do you think about? A place? A territory? A country or nation ruled by a sovereign with the title king or queen? But in the Lord's Prayer, the word kingdom means something very different. Remember that during the trial of Jesus, he was brought before the Roman governor Pontius Pilate, who asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Part of the testimony against Jesus was that he claimed to be both a Messiah and king. Jesus answered Pilate, Yes, it is as you say. But when Jesus was pressed further by Pilate to explain what he had done to be brought to trial, Jesus simply answered, My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is from another place. Pilate might have been the first, but he certainly was not the last to wonder, what kingdom? Where is this kingdom that you're talking about? But from the teachings of Holy Scripture, we learn that the kingdom of God is anywhere Jesus Christ is and rules with his sovereign power. So Jesus' answer to Pilate provides us with this unmistakable conclusion. There is a kingdom we are in now, and there is a kingdom yet to come as we pray in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come. Being part of Jesus' earthly kingdom is both a privilege and a responsibility. The kingdom that we live in here on earth is not ruled by any individual on earth. It's not a matter of geographical boundaries. It is the very presence of Jesus who said, I am with you always. The defined boundaries, if we can say that, of this earthly kingdom is simply bound by the description Jesus gives, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus had responded to Pilate, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this reason I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Remember again those words from John 14. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That is the privileged teaching we hear and believe through faith as we receive it from Jesus' own mouth as recorded in the scriptures. It is also our blessed responsibility and commission, mission, and ministry to go and proclaim the truth of God's word, 
so that all would come to know Jesus and his kingdom as he is sovereign over our lives here on the earth. So as children of God, members of his earthly kingdom, we make a commitment to believe, to trust, and to live the truths revealed in Holy Scripture. These truths guide our beliefs in Christ's church. They also provide the substance to our teachings as we go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them everything Jesus has commanded us. And these truths revealed in the Bible are given to govern our attitude and our actions. Now, this world is filled with two kinds of people. Those who live by earthly values and follow all the ways of this world, and then there are those who live by kingdom values and follow the way and will of God. The difference is simple if you consider it this way. Living by earthly values produces only earthly rewards. Rewards that may pay off quickly on this side of heaven, but in time they will certainly perish, they will spoil, they will fade. But living by kingdom values produces kingdom rewards. Rewards that won't always come to us as quickly or in the amount we would choose compared to earthly values. But spiritual rewards do not perish. They do not spoil. They do not fade. They are rewards that we have in part now through faith in Jesus in this earthly kingdom of God where Jesus rules as our sovereign. But we receive those spiritual rewards in full when we receive the crown of life in heaven, where Jesus lives and rules and reigns as sovereign over all creation. St. Paul celebrated, among his many life experiences, all of the tests and all of the trials that produced in him perseverance character, and hope. Paul was the first to admit he was not materially blessed. He was not rich the way his world measured and valued riches. But St. Paul possessed a wealth beyond earthly measure. Paul, like you and me, we possess a strong, living faith in God the Father our Lord and Savior Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And with Paul, we seek to be absolutely content with these gifts while we live in this earthly kingdom until the kingdom we pray would come, comes to us in heaven. So until God's earthly kingdom comes with the return of Jesus, when our bodies will be raised from their resting places to be joined with the soul in the mansions of heaven, we have two choices to make on earth. You can live for the world, or you can live for the kingdom of God. To seek to both, to live in both kingdoms at the same time will not work. It only results in conflict, in temptation, in hardship. It simply cannot be done. We cannot serve two masters. You must choose which kingdom you will serve, the kingdom of material wealth here on earth or the kingdom of Jesus here on earth with its spiritual and eternal rewards. Remember, from the very moment Satan tricked Adam and Eve into doubting God's words, there has been an ongoing battle in each of us in the acquisition of worldly riches and spiritual riches. We don't deny that the unholy trinity of sin, death, and the devil 
are still at work and seek to rule in this earthly kingdom, especially warring against the children of God. But when we pray, Thy kingdom come to our Heavenly Father, we are yearning for the day when the unholy Trinity will have no influence over anyone, and with the return of Jesus is ushered in the new heaven and the new earth, the eternal kingdom where God's children will wear the crown of eternal life and live forever in the presence of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So until that great and glorious day of ultimate victory, let us all, as children of God, continue living as Christ's kingdom people and witnesses of the future coming of Jesus into the world, even as we pray, Thy kingdom come. Amen. As we enter into the time of prayer, I invite you to bow your heads as we lift our petitions to our Father in heaven. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and gracious God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have commanded us to pray that you would send forth laborers into your harvest. Of your infinite mercy, give us true teachers and ministers of your word who truly fulfill your command and preach nothing contrary to your holy word. And grant that we, being warned, instructed, nurtured, comforted, and strengthened by your holy word, may do those things which are well-pleasing to you and profitable for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, look, upon, look with favor upon your servants who are hospitalized at this time, as well as all those we know and lift up from our hearts. Assure them of your mercy, deliver them from the temptations of the evil one, and give them patience and comfort in their illness. If it please you, restore them to health, or give them grace to accept this tribulation with courage and hope. Through our risen Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, God of all concord, it is your gracious will that your children on earth live together in harmony and peace. Defeat the plans of all those who stir up violence and strife and those who take delight in the destruction of property under the names of protest and demonstration. Help us by your word and spirit to search our own hearts and root out all the evil that would lead us to strife and discord, so that our lives may be lived peaceably with all people. Strengthen and protect all those who provide peace and protection in our communities, namely all law enforcement officials and first responders, along with those who serve in the armed forces of our country. Keep them from all evil and grant that all of them may serve with integrity and with honor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up in our prayers today all of our elected leaders, from our president, through our state leaders, to our community leaders, 
We pray for all of them as they find themselves ruling in a time that is very unique to every generation alive today. We pray that those leaders would not only govern with wisdom and with justice for all, but that they would be turned by your spirit to seek not earthly wisdom, but godly wisdom. And for those leaders who have no place for Jesus in their heart or life, may your spirit work even more in them to tear down the walls that they build and bring to them the saving knowledge of Jesus and your good and gracious will for all your people here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior Jesus, in your holy name, we lift our prayers to our Father in heaven and ask that in these troubled times in our nation, your Holy Spirit would turn more and more sinners to call upon your name, to humble themselves, to pray and seek the Father's face, and to turn from their sinful and selfish ways so that their prayers that are lifted in your name will be heard by our Father in heaven, that their sins will be forgiven, and that healing may come to our land and to the world, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in your Son's name. Mercifully incline your ears to us, who have now made our prayers and supplications to you and grant that those things that we have faithfully asked according to your will, we may receive to meet our need and bring glory to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior from sin, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close our time of worship this morning together by joining and singing the Lutheran service book hymn 921 on what has now been sown. God.
God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit truly bless and keep you as on this earth we live in that kingdom of Jesus in which we are blessed through the ministries of word and sacrament. May God, the Holy Spirit, bless and keep you in the treasures of saving faith. Until that day we all ascend to that heavenly kingdom which has no end. God bless and keep you as you both believe and trust, but also seek to share with all the lost the blessed hope that is yours in Jesus. Go in peace. Serve the Lord with joy in his harvest.